some very important things that we have to discuss. We're going to talk about the eye. And we are supposed to prepare ourselves for the future, the very near future. Being prepared is very important. Now at this stage, your brain is supposed to be converted to a medical brain, right? You have been spending three years studying medical information. And remember that doctors use their brain a lot. They take notes and read books. And they develop themselves <coughs> continuously. Now, this is very important. Doctors are self-learners. Even this medical school considers you as self-learners. That's why they are <coughs> decreasing the number of lectures. And what they say is, let them learn by themselves. Okay? Although I don't agree with that, but this is the policy. You are labeled as self-learners. That means we are not supposed to tell you everything. You go and teach yourself. Now doctors, even when they get old, they need continuous development. Doctors read books. Not summaries, you cannot treat people uh, with uh, summaries, with superficial information. You need details. You always remember doctors read books. <coughs> now, you have been collecting data, collecting information. Now, it's time now to cross the line to apply what you have learned. This is going to happen very soon when you go to year four, God's willing. But we need to have a taste of what is going to happen in year and the next years. Now here is very important piece of information. Anatomy is visual and descriptive science. Now, what does that mean? That means you have to use your vision and you use your brain to describe what you see. It is useless to hold a book of anatomy and go back and forth and memorize dark letters on white paper. This is not learning. So what should I do? The answer is always have an image in front of you or a model. Always. And read this image. Now, an image is equal to a thousand words, right? So use your, <clears throat> your power of observation and see what this image is telling you. Because a picture is worth thousands of words, right? And then write what this image is telling you. And this is it. <clears throat> this is how we study anatomy. This is how things become easy. Look at, look at an image or a model, describe it, write it down, and this is the way you learn. <clears throat> now, you were chosen to have bright brains, 
nobody can question that and this brain has to develop into a medical brain now how is this going to happen <coughs> by collecting and listening to every piece of information listening what others say collect the data and listen carefully to the next sentences you download these information and you enter them into your medical brain Why? now God has given you a computer in your brain so when you enter the information into your brain you need a program right computers have programs and the most powerful program programming way of thinking is mind maps this is what i am suggesting if you do not agree do what you like Mind maps present to you the key ideas and the key words. And then when the information you collected, they should be processed. They should be processed and analyzed by the computer in your brain. And this medical brain <clears throat> is a computer and it is not a flash memory. I'm afraid that when you were in high school, you were a flash memory, right? You feed it with uh, a file. Nothing happens of in the file in this USB. Nothing happens. You install it and then you take it out. No processing happens. Now, in, um, in the medical brain, no. Data should be processed. So now you are not a USB. You are a computer with programs and we need discussion we need discussion sitting around the table is a very important activity in fact it is the most important activity in your life this happens in the lab you sit around the table and discuss scientific material with your friends <coughs> process information, you collect data, you analyze it, and you discuss it. This is the way to success. It is not only collecting data. This is the way to success. Because doctors collect data. This is what is going to happen in the future. Doctors collect data, and then they share it. They share. You have to share what you know with your friends and colleagues. And they discuss it. Nobody keeps what he gets only to himself. You share information. And don't miss data analysis, discussion, and sharing. If you do this, you are holding the key to success. <coughs> it is analysis, discussion, and sharing. If you don't do these things, things will be difficult for you. This is what doctors do in the future. This is what you are going to do in the future. You collect data, you share it, and you discuss it. 
So why shouldn't I start it now? No spoon feeding. Okay? No spoon feeding. And at the end, it's up to you. It is up to you. This is the road to success in an easy, enjoyable way. Now, people have problems with their eyes. <clears throat> you see, this is pus collecting at the margins of the eyelids. So what do I need to know? Here is a problem called <coughs> calasium an abscess collecting in one of the ducts of the eyelids. Now, people will come to you having this problem. Now, I need some science. I need some information to solve this problem. Again, this is an abscess in the lower eyelid around <coughs> hair follicles and I need some science, some anatomy, to solve this problem. An insect which has stuck in the external part of the eye. Now, I need some science to solve this problem. Some foreign material in the upper eyelid. Now, how can I flip up the upper eyelid? I need some science to do it. Foreign body stuck into the cornea. And if you look at the margin of the cornea, you see lots of blood vessels that are congested, but the cornea has no blood vessels. So I need science that tells me what is the supply of the cornea. A carpenter work, working in, in a workshop and by mistake his colleague was using a gun, putting nails in. The, the nail went the wrong way and into the eye of, of this person. Still, I need science to solve and to treat this patient. This is a taste of uh, what you are going to see in the future. Black spots in the white of the eye. Uh, do you know something about melanoma? A tumor of melanocytes. This tumor is, is a very nasty one. And because the eye contains lots of pigmented cells, uh, they develop into the eye. So I need some science to understand this problem. Hemorrhage under the conjunctiva in people with hypertension and other diseases. Collection of blood in the anterior chamber of, of the eye. All these diseases are uh, problems that need knowledge, that need data of, of anatomy, physiology, and pathology. This is called pterygion, extension of the conjunctiva over the cornea. There are so many problems in life. If you go to the ophthalmology clinic, you see lots of people waiting. Each one has a different problem and we need to deal with these problems. This is a, a common problem in which the, the lens, which is supposed to be very clear, it goes opaque. It's called cataract. And still I need anatomy of the lens. This patient comes and tells you, this is what I see. The center of my vision is blurred. 
So I need to know where is the problem. The other patient comes and says, look, I have a tunnel vision as if I am in a tunnel and I, when I look at anything, there is a black circle and things are in the middle of this tunnel. So many things. A curtain going down on the visual field. All these are symptoms of things happening. We need to ask ourselves what, when, where, and why. This image is saying, read me, because an image equals a thousand words. The eyeball is a receptor that fits the optic nerve. The optic nerve is the second cranial nerve. So the eye, <coughs> quiet please, okay? Now this is a CT scan. This is the real thing. This is not a model, this is not a drawing. This is the real thing. When you go to the, your next training years, you are not going to see the eyeball or you will hold it. You are going to see an image of the eyeball. And the CT scan is going to show you uh, the eyeball. <clears throat> it's a ball. Okay, a complete uniform ball sitting in the orbit. Okay. The anterior part is modified and it's part of the, the eyeball which is visible that you see. The rest of the ball is inside, inside the orbit. You can only see the interior part. Again, this is a coronal section of a CT scan, and you can see that the eyeball is in the orbit, complete ball. This is a lateral view of the orbit and the eyeball. Here's the eyeball. Here's the anterior part which is modified. Not like the wall of the rest of the eyeball. And here is the point of entry of يا صباح ليش تطلعوا اسمعوا لكم كم كلمه شوفوا لكم كم صوره تفيدكم اذا مستنيين الله هو غني سترين This is the point of entry of the optic nerve into the eyeball if we look at the posterior part of the eyeball, you will see that there, there is an area where the optic nerve goes in and nerves and arteries and veins go in and out. This is called lamina cribrosa. This is the axis of the eyeball and you can see that the optic nerve does not get into the eye in the middle. It is more medial. It is medial to the main axis of the eyeball. This is arteries and veins getting in and out. And this area is called lamina cribrosa. Plus the eyeball, which is a moving structure, there are muscles that move the eyeball, 
right and left, up and down. Muscles are attached to this outer layer of, of the eyeball. Here are some important uh, dimensional terms. The, the equator that runs or divides the, the eye into two equal halves. Okay, this is called the optic axis. Okay. The most anterior part is the anterior pole and <clears throat> that's the equator and the, the middle dimension, the middle uh, line that surrounds the eyeball is called the meridian and then we have the posterior pole. Now this is the optic nerve. It is not entering the eyeball at the posterior pole. There is an angle between the posterior pole or the equator and, sorry, the axis and the entry of optic nerve. And this is around 14, 15 degrees. When somebody looks at the eye, which is a ball inside the, the orbit, you only see part of it, the most anterior part. The majority of the eyeball is inside the orbit. So this is what a person sees out of the eye and there are many structures that need to be labeled. The medial angle near the nose is called medial canthus and the lateral one is called the lateral canthus. Now, in the medial canthus, there is an elevation, a wide elevation called the caruncle. And then there is a fold of the conjunctiva, the mucous membrane that lines the eye. It is called plica semilunaris. Plica means a fold, and semilunaris means like half a moon. The colored part of the eye is called the iris. Now, the hole in the iris, which is a window to the interior of the eye, is the pupil. And the edge of the edge of the iris with the sclera is called limbus. Conjunctiva covers the inside of eyelids and then they reflect and cover the visible part of, of the eye. This image is telling me that the eyeball is made of basically of three layers. Okay, it's basically made of three layers, outer, middle, and inner. These three basic layers, anteriorly, they change their structure <coughs> to hold structures required for accommodation. Three layers all around, they, when they come anterior, they change their structure. The three layers are the sclera, the outer white fibrous connective tissue that protects the inner structures, 
and then the middle layer is called the choroid. The choroid is vascular and pigmented. Lots of blood vessels and lots of melanocytes pigmented. That makes the inside of the eyeball dark. And then the retina, the neural part, the light perception structure of, of the eye. I will leave this on the e-learning so that you can, you can follow the different parts of, of the eyeball. The eyeball has three coats. Okay. The fibrous outer layer is the sclera. Sclera and, and the middle layer is the choroid or the vascular layer and the innermost is the retina so let's see the layers of of the eyeball histologically <coughs> the real one now this outer layer the fibrous tissue white fibrous tissue is the outer layer and it is is clearer. The middle layer, you can see it is very dark and there are blood vessels in it. This is the middle layer and it is the choroid layer. Then the innermost layer, you can see that it has rows of nuclei. These are nuclei of cells making the retina and it is the inner layer this is a higher power of the walls of the eyeball is the outer fibrous sclera and you can see now in the preparation the the fibers were separated <coughs> And then the middle layer, which has lots of dark areas, pigmented areas, collections of melanocytes, and you can see here a blood vessel. And then the retina, the inside, which is made of 10 layers. We are not concerned about the number of layers. We are only concerned about uh, the major cells we will be talking about <coughs> very shortly. Now, if you want to read this image, we extract any piece of information. It is the outer sclera. The anterior part of the sclera is going to be modified. Modified, instead of being white and opaque, it is going to form the cornea. Cornea is a very transparent uh, structure. So the cornea is the anterior part of the sclera. Now, if you go back, the fibrous outer layer, the sclera, its anterior part is the cornea. It is posterior part is <coughs> is the <coughs> point of entry of the optic nerve and it is very transparent the cornea is very transparent and it's made of five layers we're going to see these layers in a moment and it has no blood vessels should have no blood vessels. It gets its nutrition from the the fluid and the collect the fluid in the chamber just deep to it and from from the atmosphere. Then an anterior lining membrane stroma 
and the cement membrane and then an endothelium. The, the limbus is the, uh, line, the circle that connects the cornea, the periphery of the cornea. And it is the most sensitive part in the body. The cornea is full of free nerve endings and touching the cornea is very painful. The cornea should be crystal clear. This is a nice image of the cornea. It should be crystal clear, it should be a perfect part of a sphere. Now, <clears throat> the limbus is the periphery of the cornea when it, it is <clears throat> replaced by <coughs> conjunctiva and it is the cornea, what is called <clears throat> corneo-scleral junction. That's the limbus. Now, in old people, this is going to be uh, whitish all around the corneo-scleral junction, and it's called arcus, semi, arcus senilis. You can see it in eyes of old people. Arcus sinalis. Now, if we look at the real histology of the modifications of the anterior part of the three layers of, of the eyeball, so that's the cornea. It's made of five layers, and at the periphery of the cornea, when it ends and becomes a sclera, okay? The sclera is covered by conjunctiva. So the lining of the cornea stops and the conjunctiva starts. The Hanum sacred telephone. Let me see it. تفتح تليفون في قاعة محاضرة. It's not <coughs> The conjunctiva has a subconjunctival space. That's why when there's a hemorrhage in subconjunctiva, the collection of blood comes to the limbus and it stops because the epithelium of the cornea is attached very well to underlying structures where the conjunctiva uh, indicated by the green arrow has a space uh, just beneath it. It's called subconjunctival space. And if blood collects in this place, it is going to stop at the limbus. The hemorrhage is not going to go and cover the cornea. <coughs> now here is <coughs> stratified <coughs> non-keratinized squamous epithelium. Now this thin part is the epithelium of the conjunctiva. Sorry, the, of the cornea and the thicker part is the lining of the conjunctiva so it is continuous there is no overlap between them if there is an overlap as it sometimes happens then the conjunctiva is growing over the cornea uh, this is what is going to happen, and it is called trijon. 
this is a bad cornea. A very bad cornea that has blood vessels. The cornea should not have blood vessels. These blood vessels in the cornea are indication of, of a diseased cornea. <clears throat> what are the layers of the cornea? There are five layers. On the outside, it is an epithelium, which is stratified, non-keratinized squamous epithelium. Now, any epithelium needs a membrane underneath it, which is called the Bowman's membrane. Then there is the whole thickness of the <coughs> cornea, which is called the stroma. It's made of collagen fibers. <clears throat> collagen fibers, when they are very fine and very well arranged, they are transparent. When they become thicker or irregularly arranged, they become whitish. And then there is an endothelium on the inside of the cornea. And therefore, you need a membrane underneath this endothelium, which is called the decement membrane. So we have an epithelium on the outside, endothelium on the outside. Each one of them has a basement membrane, and the major thickness is strong. That is the epithelium of the cornea, and there is this homogeneous material underneath it, which is the Bowman's membrane. Now, this is a section through the eye, anterior part, where you can see this is the cornea and this is the outside surface of the cornea stratified non-keratinized squamous epithelium and this is the <coughs> cuboidal basal layer and this is the stroma and then the endothelium and the decement membrane there's a space called the anterior chamber, and then comes the lens. The lens also has an epithelium. And the lens <coughs> is also very transparent. It's crystal clear, sacred telephone. It is crystal clear because the fibers are very well arranged. What is this image telling me? This image is telling me that normally there should be no blood vessels in the cornea. Now, the cornea is the most sensitive part in the body. You touch the cornea, you blink very violently. It's very painful. And it's called cornea reflex. If you the reflex, you touch the cornea, the orbicularis <coughs> oculi muscle will contract very, very quickly and violently. So it, it has an afferent limb and an efferent limb. So when you touch the cornea, sensations will go to the trigeminal nerve, sensory nucleus, and it is going to tell the facial nucleus, the facial, the facial nerve supplying the facial muscles to contract, and the orbicularis oculi are going to close the eye. 
Now, the cornea and the eye should be wet all the time. Dryness of the cornea results in <coughs> ulceration. Ulceration of the cornea is a difficult problem to solve and it's very, very, very painful. So, the, the eyeball, the exterior part, is lubricated by two types of, solu of solutions, the watery and the oily. The watery is <coughs> secreted by the lacrimal gland, which is present in the upper lateral part of the orbit, which has multiple ducts that will open into the conjunctival sac, and the solution is going to wet the eye as the eyelids come down and up, and these tears are drained by canaliculi. There's a little opening in the upper eyelid and in the lower eyelid. These very fine canaliculi lead to lacrimal sac, which is going to end up in the inferior meatus of the nose. That's why when somebody laughs and his eyes are full of tears, the, te the excess tears will come into the nose or, or when crying. So that's the lacrimal system. It's the watery part. And if you look here, <coughs> this is the caruncle medial side of the opening of the eye and here is what's called the punctum little hole that is going to lead to the fine canaliculus that will drain the tears now we need to cover and protect the visible parts of, of the eye and this is done by eyelids upper and lower eyelids <clears throat> and the inside is covered is covered and protected by a mucous membrane called conjunctiva conjunctiva starts at the margin of the eyelid covers the inside of the eyelid and then it reflects back on the eyeball this part of the conjunctiva is called conjunctiva of the eyelid palpebral conjunctiva and then when it reflects on the eyeball, it's called bulbar conjunctiva. Then this blue arrow is going to cover the white of the eyeball. And when it reaches the margin of the cornea, it stops. So it makes a sac, it makes a sac under the upper eyelid and a sac under the, eye, the lower eyelid and it opens to the outside between the two, the two eyelids. Now if we see the section of the eyelid which contains the oily wetting system and <clears throat> you can see these glands these glands they look like sebaceous glands and these are large glands and they have a large duct and this gland opens to the outside by its own <coughs> opening and these are called meibomian glands 
Then there are these glands which are opening into a hair follicle. These are called glands of Zeiss. And then there are these glands which look like sweaty glands. They open separately and they are called glands of mole. So the eyelid is full of glands. It's the oily system. Now, if we take this clearer, <coughs> then it is the middle layer, which is the choroid, which is pigmented and very vascular. Very vascular. Sclera is the outer fibrous layer. A few minutes we have. And then the choroid, which is full of blood vessels and pigmented cells. And here is the choroid. The choroid layer is also called uveal tract blood vessels and melanocytes. The anterior part of the choroid is modified. It's not, the three layers are not three layers. The middle layer is going to be modified like in this circle. It is going to be thicker, triangular in section, and it is going to form the as the cornea, and this is the sclera. That's the modified part of the choroid is. <clears throat> okay, I'll just finish in a, in a minute. That is the anterior part of the choroid, triangular in shape. It's called the ciliary body. <coughs> and the ciliary body gives processes that will secrete the aqueous humor and it will give rise to the sclera as well. Okay? To be continued next lecture. Thank you.